Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna talk all about data modeling best practices. Stay tuned. Okay, data modeling best practices. Everybody should follow them. Everybody should think about them when they're building a data model um, for Power BI. And so the reason what sparked all this, what sparked the video was Adam did a video recently on reducing the data size, right? Reducing your data set size. And he mentioned a couple of really good practices for data modeling. You should go watch that video before, before you get into this. Um, so I'm gonna wait, go watch the video. Hang on, I'll wait for you. Okay, you're back, all right. Watch that video and he provide these two good tips about, you know, high cardinality columns and turning off auto date time. And you should absolutely do those. There's some other best practices, some other data modeling best practices you should follow. I'm going to talk about them, right? And so the first thing, the first thing I want to talk about, in addition to the great stuff that Adam did in this video, is avoid wide wide tables make your tables narrow and you may be going patrick well i have a wide table and it's working just fine for my data model my reports right now and you're right right it can work i'm not saying you can't use wide tables but the problem with wide tables is as the data volumes grow as that as it starts to get longer and longer right get more and more rows in that data model it could affect affect the performance of your data model your slicers and things like that another thing it can do is it can start to abuse memory it just beats it up it misuses it, it just misuses your memory it bloats your model gets big and it just you know uses more memory than it really needs because you're duplicating all these values over and over and it does probably that does a good job of compression compression but as those table get, gets wide and more columns are added right it can really start affecting it okay and you go Patrick my de my data is not gonna grow so I don't have to worry about that and you're right you're right if you're if you're that person right you can probably probably get away with a wide table. But let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. What if someone says, hey, I need to introduce another table that has different but very similar data. And I want you to correlate the values across those two tables. How are you going to solve that problem? So we're not talking about the number of rows in your data, you know, in that flat table. We're talking about introducing a new table. How do you solve that? OK, so you guys know I like to do instead of all this talking, head over to my laptop. I'm going to show you head over to my laptop. So let's say you have this data model right here, right? And it's just one flat table. This works. It's perfectly. You create a, a bar chart and you analyze sales across product. It's pretty easy. So let's do that. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a very simple report. So in my wide fact in that sales table, right? All these columns. I got to go up and down all these columns. I'm going to choose English product name. And I'm going to create a nice little bar chart out of it, right? I'm going to create it to be, you know, specific, a clustered column chart. And I'm going to add my sales amount, my internet sales, sales amount right there. Okay, perfect. This is what they need. Let's just pretend. Let's just pretend this is all they need. And then they come back and say, hey, we have this new table that we want to introduce because I want to compare internet sales to reseller sales. All right. What are you going to do? How are you going to correlate those values in a single chart well so you go over click this one then i go to my reseller sales and i find the sales amount there and you can name this stuff better and clean it up a little bit right but i find the sales amount there and i add it what's wrong well you you guys know what's wrong we've done videos on this in the past there's no relationship between those two tables so you get this cartesian product and it just duplicates the same value over and over and over how do you solve this how do you just make this simpler so you can do it you can create two charts right that's easy so if you look back on my two charts report you can see i have two different charts and maybe you can over now nah, you don't want to do that um how do you solve this so what what somebody said to me recently was ah oh, patrick this is easy right all you need to do is what are you trying to compare well i want to you know look at this by product so make a relationship between product key and product key because it exists in both tables now i'm going to get this nice little warning it's going to say hey this is a many to many unless right if you don't completely understand many, how many to many relationships work you should totally avoid these right now i did a video on this a while ago you should totally avoid many to many um, but if you know how it works and know that it could possibly introduce um unexpected results because of the data right i'm 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 depending on this relationship to handle all that. And so if you don't understand how it works, it could introduce some unexpected results. And so you should avoid many to many, unless you really understand how they work and really understand your data. So if I click okay, 
Something else you're going to notice is what it does is it's going to make it a bi-directional relationship. Something else you need to know. Something else you need to consider when you set up something like this. But then it gets even more complicated. It gets even more complicated and they go, hey, Patrick, but not only do I want to look at this by product, but I also want to look at this by sales territory. So you say, OK, well, that worked really well for me. So I'm going to go find my sales territory key and I'm going to drop it right there. Bam. Then you get the same warning if I click OK. But now this relationship, oh, the lines look a little different because it's an inactive relationship. How do you handle that? Hmm, some another complexity that you'll have to deal with. So now my data model is complex. My DAX is going to be complex. And now your performance is truly going to be affected by this because you have bi-directional relationships. You have some really complex DAX that you have to deal with and accommodate every time you create measures with this. Right. So maybe your data volumes won't grow and, you know, perform your performance won't be affected by large volumes of data. But when your data model starts to get complex and you have to figure out how to handle multiple tables, then you have all these new things that are introduced. How do you handle these things? How do you manage with these things? Well, that leads into the next topic, the next best practice. So the first thing is try to avoid white tables for all the reasons I said before, right? For all those things. The next topic though, it, it just leads right into it. What you should consider doing is creating these really focused narrow tables. And this, right, this, for, for those that are familiar with this, these are called start schemas. So you want to create a start schema. So there's two things I want you to do. There's some guidance document. Adam's going to post a link in the comments below to it. You should go read that guidance document. It tells you all about start schemas. But also I wrote a video. I wrote a video. I did a video with my daughter a while ago, flat file to data model. I think it was with her. And um, you should go watch that video. And it shows you how to take this flat flat table and create a data model. This is if you're if you don't already have a data warehouse, right? If you don't already have a star schema. And so what you could do is take a look at my, my screen. Instead of having these very wide tables, you see these very wide tables, you can make them narrow and start pulling out the things that are really specific into lookup tables or dimensions. So if you take a look, what I've done here, I have this product table and now I have my my two sales tables these are what we call fact tables and they would contain you know summarization data and my dimension tables they contain you know data that i would use for grouping and filtering it, the, the the star schema is optimized for reporting okay it's optimized for reporting so now what i can do using this model is easily right go to a single product table not as many columns right i click my product name make my bar chart and then I can go to each one of these, go to my sales table, my internet sales, choose sales amount, and then go to my reseller sales, choose sales amount, probably give it better names. But now you can see that the correlation, it just happens. It works because I'm using a single table. This is just great. My star schema, optimized for reporting, optimized for grouping, filter, filtering, <laughs> filtering, filtering, and summarizations or aggregations, right? It's perfect. So let me show you, right? Let me wrap this up. Let me show you what a huge, a nice, nice star, star schema looks like. So you can see here, I have my star schema. I have my internet sales table right there. I have my reseller sales table. And now I have my really narrow tables that are focusing in, my dimension tables that are focusing in on specific things like product, sales territory, customer, geography. And this is great. And what you can do, and so this makes it easy for reporting, right? Because they're categorized into these little buckets. I like to call them little buckets or lookup tables or the formal name, dimensions. They're categorized that way. And I can easily drag and drop and build my reports. But Power BI provides you with this ability to create different views of data, right? And so let's say I want to just have a view of my internet sales. I can drag, drag this table right here on the modeling view and then say add my related tables. It automatically adds it. Maybe the product has more related tables and it continues to add it. And so I can call this internet sales. And then if I want to, right, I can do one for reseller sales and just repeat the steps, add my related table and it just does it for me, rename it. So now I can see the different views, what it's related to. I can look at it in a consolidated view or an individual view by my fact tables. This is great, right? So two quick tips, two quick tips. Remember, try to avoid the wide tables um, because they can produce some inconsistencies and affect performance. And then instead of using that, look at using star schemas, which are optimized and built um, for reporting your dimensions, for grouping and filtering and your facts for you know summarizations and aggregations. All right, what do you guys think? You got any questions, comments? You know what to do, post it in the comments below. This is your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel. 
hit that subscribe button. And if you like my video, give a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.